thank you, Michael, for the introduction, and thank you all for uh, staying for the talk. Um, so um, it's my first uh, Phos4G conference, and I was actually quite surprised to see from the outset that there was quite a lot of uh, talk about uh, space and space data, space applications. So this is great. All the basics are out of the way, but I know that the geospatial community is already uh, making use of this data. Uh, so I work with the European Space Agency and in particular with uh, a program uh, focusing on business application space solutions. And today I'd like to explain a little bit uh, more about what the program is and how the geospatial community can engage with the program. And your introduction on open and uh, closed source was uh, quite useful because my examples are exactly uh, bringing these two together and uh, looking at some of the freemium models that are out there. I won't focus too much uh, on the European Space Agency and what it does, but actually, uh, as you can see and you're probably aware, it's um, across the board, there are a lot of uh, uh, areas that are being explored, all, all the way from human spaceflight to technology, navigation, Earth observation, telecommunications. But in my world, I'm based there in the middle, uh, in a business uh, supporting uh, small businesses and actually bigger businesses as well. Uh, with business incubation, so all the way from the start of a business to business applications and developing uh, new products. So in my program we claim that we drive innovation uh, through incorporating uh, space data and technology into different services. Uh, and we mainly speak about uh, uh, these uh, five, servi five um, assets of space. Earth observation, which is all your imagery, but also satellite navigation, so any data that you might get from GPS and GNSS, any location data. Also satellite telecommunications, if you're transferring data from remote places. But we do look into hardware, space technologies, and of course uh, some technologies and that are developed for human spaceflight and are transferred to other sectors. Uh, what makes us slightly different from other ESA programs is that we really target other sectors, not necessarily uh, space sectors. So as long as a company is utilizing one of these space assets, they can qualify for, uh, for some of our funding. So this is why the geospatial sector is actually so uh, tempting for me, because you're already quite prone to using this data. And we are looking at all these sectors. So the companies that we work with operate across the board, all the way from maritime to fintech, uh, uh, aviation, media, agriculture. So what exactly do we offer? So apart from uh, the straightforward funding mechanisms that we have, we have a whole package that offers uh, different things at different cycles of the companies. So if you're a very early stage company that is looking to incubate or transform, uh, you can benefit from the funding, you can benefit from some of the shared facilities, um, you can benefit from uh, country support, uh, more regional support, business modeling, and it's, it's an encompassing package. Um, of course, you have access to our networks. Uh, I will speak about this a little bit more uh, next. And finally, you, you can, you can uh, shout about uh, the ESA brand and you can use this uh, um, further on. So this, is, um, this slide uh, shows a little bit uh, of our presence in uh, Europe and uh, our network. So on the business incubation side, we have around 20 centers. They're based around different countries. Some countries have multiple centers and they're really strong in the regional ecosystem. So they, are, um, they do have uh, uh, some small funding from ESA, but it's mostly regional funding and they really focus on the regional ecosystem and the strengths around this. Um, in the business applications side, uh, we have funded again a lot of projects. Um, and under the innovation network, you can see the 19 ambassadors. So these are basically people that are based in the countries and are explaining what the program is. They're helping you fill in the applications. And if you, if you have any questions, they're trying to stimulate new ideas. They're trying to bridge in different communities, let's say from uh, geospatial and uh, maybe someone working on uh, illegal wildlife trade or, or examples like this. Um, we also have the innovation partners and they're solely looking at technology transfer. 
uh, spin in and spin out from the space sector, so something that is developed in the space sector and can be used elsewhere and the other way around. Um, and finally, uh, once, once you go through some of these funding mechanisms and projects, we do have different uh, investment forums of where uh, we choose companies to pitch in front of investors, sort of drag and dance style uh, events. So don't, don't focus on this. This is a completely random slide, but it's just, again, reinforcing the message that uh, during your life, cy life cycle of the company, you have different mechanisms that can help you out, and there are a variety of, uh, of uh, people and functions that you can speak to in order to see which ones is best for you and how to uh, navigate the landscape. Um, the funding, of course, also ranges, and uh, it's uh, different from feasibility studies, or if you're more mature and you want to go straight to a demonstrator phase, this is uh, also possible. So what are some of the real opportunities for, uh, for this community, apart from uh, the processes and, uh, and applications for funding? Um, so I've taken a kind of approach, as uh, you did, Michael, on more, uh, more integrated approach of combining open source and closed source, combining different data sets which might be open or closed, but not necessarily. Your solution can be uh, based on open source and open data. What is crucial for us is for you to have a customer at the end of it. And some of the feasibility studies really help with this because you would have some of the business support, some looking at the business modeling, and really starting from what is the user need, what is the need there in the community, exploring this a little bit more, and then building a solution uh, around this. Um, I won't go too much over the data sets because you've heard uh, about the Sentinel data, you know the Landsat data. Yesterday we had some uh, a talk from Planet as well on some of their data sets. So if you want to incorporate some of this uh, in an existing solution, this program might be one avenue to do so and to do so with the customer at the end. Uh, of course, there is uh, open source software in geospatial, some of, some of the processing software for satellite imagery as well, so these are components that you can use. And many of our projects are, uh, are also using uh, platforms like Google Earth Engine so that they can facilitate their solutions as well. So I've chosen a couple of examples to give you, and these are a couple of uh, regional examples from uh, Romania. Unfortunately, the companies themselves couldn't be here today to present them, but uh, if you'd like to get in touch with any of them, you can. I can uh, link you up. Uh, so this is a, a Telespazio company, and they, were, uh, uh, they did a project uh, looking at the Danube River and uh, producing some, uh, some alerts uh, for the naval traffic based on ice bank and sand, bank, sand banks in the summer. So they use some Earth observation data, which is uh, part of their uh, company. Uh, so they, they do have satellites, and it's a Cosmos SkyMed, very high resolution data, and it, it's, it's a commercial data source. Uh, and they use some satellite communication to transfer the data from remote places. Uh, but of course, they also use some open source components, so I've, I've listed this for you just to reiterate the message that even though that this is a, a commercial actor with a commercial client at the end of it, they've made use of, uh, of uh, some open source uh, products as well. Another very good example is a company called uh, Box2M, and uh, they're dealing with industrial, in, uh, industrial uh, Internet of Things. So they're placing sensors on um, remote infrastructure, either to do with utilities or energy and oil and gas uh, industry as well. And they're using um, uh, telecommunications to transfer the data back. So it's a slightly uh, different uh, solution than the normal uh, Earth observation solutions that were presented here today. Uh, they've used a bunch of open source components as well, and they've built upon these. They're quite open to speak to any of you if you want to get in touch. And uh, this is quite a good example because they've only done one project within, uh, within um, our program. And uh, actually, they uh, pitched at one of our investor forums, and now they are getting some follow-on investment to commercialize further uh, their solutions. 
So this particular example is uh, not from uh, Romania, but uh, it's, it is an Irish example. And I've chosen it because we've been speaking today about business models a little bit and freemium and, and how to split uh, uh, this. Um, so they're, they're mapping trees and they're using some uh, satellite data for this, but they're also using some crowdsourcing solutions. Uh, they're asking people to upload images of, um, of trees with uh, GPS location where, they're not, where they don't have that much data. And their model is quite nice because it is targeting uh, the public and there are, some, uh, there are some free data sets that you can see on their website and you can contribute. And of course, they have different solutions for different users. So they've split their users quite nicely. You can, this, is, this is public information from their website, so you can, you can see this as well. And they have different price plans for uh, forest managers, for companies. So it's a quite uh, uh, diverse break, breakdown and uh, business model. So this, uh, this is probably, <laughs> in my view, the most important slide. And uh, it's some of the opportunities that we uh, have coming up. And I, I think that they're really, really relevant for uh, this community here. So we have, uh, and they're all starting uh, in September or October with uh, the different dates. We also have a bunch of uh, webinars explaining what the opportunity is and getting into a bit more of the detail, uh, how to apply, what is uh, the team, who is the end user. So the first one is on environmental crimes and it's, uh, it's uh, looking at environmental quality, anything from the quality of land, uh, also water use, the second one is on poaching and trafficking, so anything to do with illegal live li wildlife trade, encroaching on uh, wildlife habitat, um, and then you have uh, another stream on natural resources. Uh, quite similar, but not with the crimes element, is uh, biodiversity, so uh, agriculture, fisheries, biofuels, and uh, transport networks. And an even wider call on uh, artificial intelligence, uh, I think the, f yeah, the first one is closing uh, uh, very shortly, but then you have the one focusing on infrastructure and again environment and natural resources. So really um, environment and biodiversity running through all of this, but with a different, uh, different twist. I think I've gone a bit uh, faster, but I can spend uh, uh, some time on this slide. So um, I started by saying that uh, today we've seen, uh, up today we've seen a lot of uh, space data um, being presented uh, here, uh, and it is quite relevant for the geospatial community. And there are also uh, tools out there like the business applications and space solutions program that can um, facilitate some of the innovation of using this data within geospatial uh, solutions and hopefully combining open and uh, closed source. And uh, this image is almost completely random, but not. Uh, as you said, there, is, uh, there should be some uh, giving back uh, with, uh, with open source uh, solutions. So this one, this is um, a little project that Google Earth did for uh, Margaret Hamilton, uh, the software engineer that actually coined the term and uh, did the in-flight software for the Apollo 11 mission. So they did it now for the anniversary of the moon landing. And it's some solar panels that were used during the night to reflect the light of the moon with her image. So quite a neat uh, uh, project. But you can see there is a video online if you haven't seen it yet, it's uh, pretty cool. Uh, and also, that's uh, a little plugin. I can see maybe a few of our uh, geo chickas that attended the event, and there is a panel tonight. So, if you are more interested about skills in geospatial, this is uh, one of the birds of feather sessions uh, later on. And yes, thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Go for it. Um. No, no, it's a zero equity funding from, from the agency. So there are different tiers of funding, but they're all zero equity. Also, in, uh, in uh, not in incubation, but if there are some accelerator program, still that is uh, equity free. So there is, you don't take any equity. Yes, for acceleration programs, it's also equity free. Can I ask another question? <laughs> sure, go for it. Um, and 
Does it have to be a startup that's applying for it? It can be an existing company that's already been running. Is, is the startup idea more than a startup company? No, so so there. Yes and no. So um, if you want to apply for incubation, of course, you have to be a very early stage or thinking about creating a company. So this is a more intense program of where it's a three year program and uh, you have shared facilities and coaching and all of this. So this is the incubation site. For the application site, you can be a startup, but you can be an established company as well. And there are different uh, different models of funding. So some of the funding is 100%. If you want to do a demonstrator, some of the funding is 50% as well. No more questions? Uh, make sure it's there, <laughs> uh, sure. Yeah, we, we have time, so you uh, can go for it. Uh, do you have a list of what you've already funded so that when you're making a proposal you can avoid duplicating? Uh, yes, of course. So we have uh, uh, we have a very uh, comprehensive database on our website, and you can search by uh, company or by sector, like energy, uh, energy fintech. So I'll give you. I have a couple of brochures, so you can have some of these. Sorry, Who are those investors in front of whom we are going? Or people are going to pitch. Um, so this is uh, this is the final element of our program, and uh, it is working with the elite group of investors. And um, so recently we had uh, we had a pitch in front of so some investors from the London Stock Exchange and the Milan Stock Exchange. So it's usually a diverse pool of investors. Some of them are space investors, like uh, Seraphim Space Capital is a traditionally space investor. Some of them are more corporate investor. So it's it's a list of different uh, different investors but i'm trying to figure it out how does it work uh, if we have somebody from wall street or other big companies what does it work with zero percent equity this doesn't fit into my mind yes no so you're quite right actually there are two concepts there so the first one is the our funding program which is zero uh, percent equity and then the, inve the private investors that I mentioned are almost an add-on from the program. Once you go through the program, if you want, you can have the opportunity to pitch in front of investors for further, further funding. So we kind of facilitate these opportunities and then it's up to you to decide whether this is worth it, worthwhile for your company or not. So actually you guys are organizing a funding round for those who are already in seed stage. Exactly, you can see it as a follow-on funding round once you need more uh, funding for from private investors. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you very much. I'll be around, so if you have any further questions, let me know.